Hey guys, it's Josh, Cerny Ridge Farmer, and today is the day. The first day we're gonna go into the beehive for the spring, so come along with me. We're gonna check out the honeybees. We lost four out of five hives this year. That's a big time bummer, but we gotta keep on moving because sometimes farming's failing and it ain't no big deal. We gotta keep our heads up and we're gonna get into the bee boxes today. So I'm gonna take you, show you the bee boxes, show you what to look for the first time you're checking them in the spring. And also we're gonna show you a little bit about beekeeping, the equipment you need, and a little bit of advice if you wanna get started in beekeeping. So come along with me guys, woo! America, baby. Beekeeping in America. All right. Woo! First of all, let's talk about beekeeping equipment. The things that you need, your minimal essential things that you need and things that I use every time I get in my beehive. I have a lightweight shirt on. I wear long pants. Can't see it because I'm too fat to pick my leg up. I also need my smoker. Sometimes you don't need a smoker. If your bees are used to people and it's a high nectar flow time of the year, you may not need a smoker. I'm gonna use a smoker today because I don't know what the attitude of my bees might be. Next essential is your hive tool. You gotta to have a hive tool, guys. You can get this at a hardware store or a beekeeping supply place. It's a little nail puller, hive tool, something very simple like $6 thing. Sometimes you go to your beekeeping place and they're gonna charge you $15, $20 for this stupid thing. Check out your hardware store first. So let me tell you this, guys. I'm not a purist. I'm not going to go into my beehives with no gloves. I'm not going to go into my beehives with no veil. I have facial hair. What does facial hair mean to a bee? Bear. It means bear in the beehive. I'm not going to be that bear and get stung in the mouth. First time I got into the bees without a face shield on, I got stung right in the mouth. Haven't done it since and won't do it again. So here's what I have. And basically, this is just a jacket, okay? It's just a beekeeping jacket. <laughs> You slip it on, you slip the veil over your head without the hat, and boom, zip it up, you're good to go. Guys, you wanna make sure when you got your beekeeping jacket on that you got it all the way zipped up and the little Velcro things are done up here. You also have little finger hooks here, okay? You hook your fingers in there. This thing is crusty and old. I'm getting to the point where I might need to get myself a new bee jacket. Right now, it'll do, but I've got a few tears in there. No biggie. So another essential tool that I use is a beekeeping glove, okay? I use this glove. It has a little mesh in here to keep your hands cool. It doesn't work. It doesn't keep your hands cool, but it helps a little bit, okay? I stay hot all the time, and when you're in the middle of these beehives and you're checking on six or seven or ten hives and it's 90 degrees outside, you're nasty. You're hot. You're dripping with sweat. It's okay. These might help a little bit, this mesh, but I don't know how much it really helps. Maybe it helps you feel better about it. Another thing I use is this little handy dandy deal right here. This hooks on the edge of the hive just like that so that I can drop frames in here if I need to. So if I need to pull one frame out and I don't have my wife there to help me and hold stuff, then I'll use this as a holder and it just hangs on the edge of the box and I'll show you how it works in a minute. Another essential tool, okay? A cigarette lighter or one of these fancy burner thingies, okay? This thing right here will help you ignite your smoker. I'm gonna put a link to all this stuff down below, guys, so don't worry, if you're lost, you'll be found. I'll put a link down below to all this stuff and if you want to pick it up, you can easily pick it up. The next essential tool that I use in my beekeeping, and I learned this from my dad who kept bees for years and years, is burlap. Guys, when you walk into an old hardware store and you look around and you see these burlap bags for sale, buy them. Buy them if you want to keep bees because guess what? You cut this bag in half or into a quarter, I guess, for today and that's all we'll need to smoke our bees. This thing costs 20 cents. It's easier than stuffing leaves in and straw and all sorts of gizmos that you can buy online. Just find yourself some cheap burlap sacks, burn it, it calms the bees, it works just fine. And that's what I use. Stony Ridge Farmer recommends it. Hey, Stony Ridge Farmer, what do I do to get started beekeeping? Check your county's agricultural extension office. They probably offer a class in beekeeping. If they don't offer a class in beekeeping, check neighboring counties. If you can't find that, there's a lot of good advice online. I took a beekeeper's course. I could have become certified master beekeeper, all that stuff like that, but I, that paperwork wasn't important to me. The thing that was important was learning how to do the basics in beekeeping. And that's what I'm gonna show you today, just some basics. Question I gotta ask myself, where do I put my mic? I think I'm gonna put it right here, guys, just to be cool. All right, all right, all right. All right I'm gonna give you some beekeeping basics right here, okay? So here's our smoker.
right guys, so some beekeeping basics. Here's our smoker. We're gonna stuff in our burlap. We're gonna light our little torch. And we're gonna get it started. Okay, turn your torch off. See the flame? Extinguish the flame. Give it a few pumps. Now, boom. See that big, beautiful, awesome smoke? We're gonna go over here, we're gonna smoke the beehive, and I'll show you. Right here on the bees, we're gonna smoke the entrance. Gently, gently blow smoke, guys. Gently, be gentle. Pop the lid, and we blow a little smoke in our hive top feeder here, okay? All this smoke isn't necessary, but it's my first time in the bees this year, and I, you know, be honest, I don't want them all spooky and mad and trying to sting me. We keep a hive top feeder on all winter long, okay guys? We're gonna crack the top, and we're gonna blow a little smoke in there. Raise the lid, look at all those bees. Smoke them down. What you're doing this first time in is you're assessing what's going on in the hive, okay guys? You want to make sure everything seems to be in good order. That your bees are putting honey in the top of the hive and not putting honey in the bottom of the hive. If so, then we may need to switch our boxes. So this is a great brood pattern, okay? And this is what you want to see. What you're seeing here is brood, which is baby bees being born, and food on the outside right here, okay? Guys, here's where we use our little stand. <clears throat> We're gonna hang it on right here. Pull that out. Pull that frame out. This is called a frame. We're gonna hang it right here. Isn't that nifty? Gonna give them a little more smoke. And we're gonna open this one up, take a look. What we're looking for is brood in various stages. Various stages of life, basically. And we're looking for young bees. When you start beekeeping, you'll learn a little bit about what bees, what old bees look like and young bees look like. And we're also assessing for the queen. I don't see the queen on this frame. We're gonna set it aside. Most likely your queen will be on a fairly empty frame. This one looks good too. So guys, you'll see a little bit of pollen, pollen in here, okay? On this outside edge here, you can see pollen, and that'll be little yellow stuff in there. And pollen is the honeybee's protein source. These bees look really good, guys. We're going to go ahead and put our frames back in. Something you need to know about beekeeping is bees recognize sudden movements, okay? If you don't want to be stung, be calm, and the bees will remain calm. Unless you've just got a really grumpy hive, which does happen. Okay, so we're going to take this. This is called a super. We're gonna set this super to the side. We're gonna get into the next super. So we have honey. We want honey high and we want brood low. We wanna move this super up if we can, okay? You wanna clean up the burr comb. This is called burr comb. It's, it's honey comb. It's sitting on the top in between frames and it's undesirable. So guys, we're taking our brood and we're moving them down into the bottom of the hive and we're putting honey up top. So this is an eight frame hive. I brought another super to put on top of this for honey storage and I'm gonna go get it and put it on there. So guys, in review, let me tell you what I did. This is the first check of my bees this year. I opened the hive, I wanted to assess for brood. I also wanted to assess for food. We had plenty of brood going on. We had plenty of food, which is honey and pollen. Pollen's a protein source. Honey is the carbohydrate. Our beehive is very active. The time of day we want to check this is about 12 noon to 1 o'clock, maybe even 11 a.m., depending on the heat of the day. During the hot part of the day, most of the bees are out. At about 2.30, 3 o'clock, they start coming back in. Right now is an inappropriate time for me to check this. These bees are all coming back in and it's about three o'clock. So I should have checked them a little earlier, but I was busy. So what we're assessing is our brood. Our brood is our unhatched bee eggs, okay? We wanna see brood that's capped and about ready to hatch, maybe even see some babies hatching. We also wanna see eggs. We wanna see 
fresh little eggs and we also want to look in there and we want to see some worms it look like little worms and that's the larva for the bees so we want to see that they're in various stages if we see eggs we know we got a good queen and everything's doing fine later on in the spring we're also going to be looking for queen cells and queen cells are like oblong cells which the bees are trying to make another queen so that they can swarm. We've got our bees situated right out here in front of our fruit trees, so hopefully if they do swarm, the swarm will go out and land on a fruit tree and we can capture it and start a new hive from it. One thing I failed to mention is we removed our entrance reducer. This is a reducer and reduces the hole to a tiny size for the winter time so that the bees don't get robbed out. This time of year, it's a high nectar flow time and we want them to be able to go in and out without being impeded so we removed our entrance reducer and this is it right here it just slides in this spot all right guys so we got into the honeybees for the first time this year in review i tell you what we're looking for we were looking for brood we're looking for various stages of bees that weren't quite hatched yet we needed to see eggs we needed to see larva and we needed to see capped covered larva that's getting ready to hatch we need to assess how much brood is in there. We also need to look in the spring and see if the bees are putting the brood up top and the honey down low, which if they are, we take the brood, we put it down and we take the honey and we put it up. Pretty simple. We also assess to see how full the hive is. Is the hive really full? If so, we add another super on the top of it and a super is just a box. And basically I just use all medium supers and we put in some old drawn comb that we had uh, harvested out last year. We set it basically right on top of there and we pulled one frame out of the middle of one of the supers and stuck it up there so as to drive the bees upward to work with what they have. And we like to put a little bit of honey or a little bit of honey and brood up there so that the bees are forced to go up there and recognize that as a new part of their hive. So we've got the brood in various stages. We've got honey and we've got pollen. Honey is a carbohydrate source and pollen is a protein source. So the bees look good. We'll probably have to split that hive in order to keep it from swarming because it is rocking right now. It's doing really good and that's what we want to see, okay? Right now our goal with our honeybees is more to build stock than it is to harvest honey. We'll probably harvest, eh, I'm gonna say around 120 pounds of honey this year, which is a significant amount of honey and it'll pay for the bees, but we really need to focus on building our honey bee population back up on the farm and staying vigilant with our bees. A lot of times I think when you have failing colonies and when you have a failing issue, which a lot of people do, oftentimes it's the beekeeper's fault. They're not keeping up with their bees the way they should and I'll fully admit that I haven't been keeping up with my bees the way I should and that's probably why I lost some hives this winter. I'm gonna put a link to everything that I use down here below and in case you guys don't know, I put links down here below to make it easy for you for one reason and the second reason is I get a little bit of a commission off of the stuff that you buy. So if you're interested in buying honeybee stuff why not help the stony ridge farmer a little bit that'd be nice of you so guys that's it for the farm vlog today we checked the honeybees they look very good we see brood in various stages of life we've seen eggs we've seen uncapped larva and we've seen capped larva that's preparing to hatch we also see plenty of honey and we see plenty of pollen plenty of activity in the hive the hive seems to be full of bees the hive is full of honey also so we put one more super on top of the beehive and we took two frames from the middle of the top super and stuck them in to our new super so as to give the bees a reason to go up into that new super box and a super is just a, a box with the frames hanging in it i encourage you to check with your local county agricultural extension office if you want to get into beekeeping most likely they'll have a class there are beekeeping associations in most counties i'm not a master beekeeper but i do know a little bit about beekeeping if you have questions don't hesitate to ask leave me some comments leave me some thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel Share these videos with people, guys. I want you to see what it's like to live on a farm. So, without further ado, guys, come and see me again sometime. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. This is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Thanks for checking me out. Well, Woo! come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Let me tell you Woo! about... Ugh. Well, guys, that's it. We've checked the take those uh man so guys in review hmm. we're looking for brood in various stages oh.